Have you ever wondered what Scrum Masters do all day? Curious and excited to know about this? Yes. So I'm Aradhana Sresta. I'm working as a project manager and Scrum Master in Kotivati Nepal, as mentioned by Jayaji already. Uh, so I have more than eight years of experience working and driving the adoption of Agile, value, its values, and the principle in product and project management in, within the organization. And I'm truly very passionate about leading the change, helping the mindset and influencing the cultural change. And that is all about the Agile. So welcome to this presentation. And I'm hoping like all the audience, whoever might be already working as a Scrum Master or looking forward to work as a Scrum Master, um, I'm not sure like what kind of audience we have now. So this presentation is all about like if you are already in this role and ever wondered like what does the Scrum Master do whole day, then that's you will you will see like the more highlights on that like what does they do, and then another is like if you are looking for the career as a scrum master, then also it could be a little helpful, like what you need to do in the future if you're already looking for this role. Um, okay, so let's get it started then. So your daily work matters. Yes, it matters to you, to your project, to your product, and to your organization. Whatever you do on the daily basis, it does matter. It matters a lot. So what does this Scrum Master do? So what do you guys think? Like if you are already from this background or if you have ever read about the Scrum Masters, then what do you think? Like what does the Scrum Masters do? So I'm, I'm like, let's make this session interactive. And if you have any like, thoughts on this then please speak up um so you are always like let's make this interactive so anything you have so any one of you would like to share what do you think what does the scrum masters do any one of you from from the group if not then let's see like what i, I came up with Okay. So when you think about, so it might be like for many of you, if you are already working or you are working in a scrum team, you might notice like the scrum master do the check on progress status of everyone on the team. If that is what the scrum masters do, make sure that everyone has something to work on. Is that something a scrum master does? So organize product backlog and a scrum board. Split the work between developers. Connect with management and stakeholders on the status of the projects. And organize everything around the team, such as meeting and work schedules. Does it sound familiar to you? Do you think so? If you're already working in the scrum, then you might have noticed like these are the things might be scrum master is doing around, right? So it sounds familiar, right? For many of you already, if you are new to this scrum, then might be you noticing like, okay, these are the some things being done by the scrum masters on the daily basis. So here we have a little a break, breakout question type of thing. Like if you want, like we, we are not going to break down with the, in, within the room, but then we let's have like a conversation on this. Like what do you guys think? Like if you ever uh, have an idea of like what would be the roles and responsibilities of Scrum Masters? What do you guys think? What is the roles and responsibilities of a Scrum Master? In, any idea from any one of you? Any thoughts? Uh, so first of all, I have given all the permission to unmute so you can speak uh, in this Zoom meeting. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Raj. 
So what do you think? Uh, any one of you can speak up, please. Let's make this interactive. Like what, what comes to your mind when you think about it? What would be the roles and responsibilities? Anyone? Okay. Hello. So, uh, ah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is Miss, this is Miss Anzi. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Scrum Master is uh, like a bridge, bridge between the client and mm -hmm. the developer. Like he, he, is he's, he is responsible for all the dividing the tax, delivery date, mm -hmm. and others other related with the project delivery and board mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. I think the, uh, the, that I think that's it. Yeah, great, great. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing your uh, opinion on this one. So anyone else think differently or can add on this one? Thanks, Sanjay, uh, for setting some light on it. Yeah, welcome. Okay, so uh, if anyone, anyone, anyone else want to speak up? Okay, let's move on then. So, and that's good, um, Sanjay. So maybe, so if you are uh, new to the Scrum, or not, uh, or maybe working in a team, then you might have noticed like the uh, Scrum masters do the facilitation of the rituals that the Scrum framework defines. And I'm not sure like if you have already have like the background, like these are the frameworks that have been defined by the Scrum guideline, where we follow the cycle of um, certain rituals. And the Scrum Master might be, if you are already working in a Scrum, then you might have noticed like Scrum Master does the facilitation of these all rituals. So we have like the five rituals that need to be followed in a Scrum. So starting with the sprint planning and then the daily standup it has, backlog refinement. And then um, uh, we have a sprint review and a sprint retrospective. So these are the five rituals that Scrum Master does facilitation. You might have noticing uh, like, okay, Scrum Master is doing daily standard meeting call, uh, and sprint planning, uh, bringing all the stakeholders and the team together for the sprint planning, and then the sprint reviewing, doing the retrospective and all. So these might be the roles and responsibilities of the Scrum Masters and like Sanjay means and like, okay, playing the bridge between the stakeholders and the de developers or the team. Um, I'd say like the development team or the stakeholders, like what the deadline is, when it needs to be delivered and so on, right? So Scrum has a kind of like a certain set of rules that need to be followed. Like it has like the sprint, which has like the one to four weeks it goes, some follow like the one week even, some company follows like the two weeks sprint, some company follows four weeks sprint. So depending on the team, depending on the project, depending on the organization, it keeps on various, but the Scrum guidelines is like the sprint should not be more than four weeks for, it means like for a month maximum, that should be the cycle for the sprint. And within that cycle of the sprint, it starts with the planning, and then the, after the planning, like what needs to be done, let's say like one to two weeks or one to four weeks is their sprint is defined. Then within that time period, like what needs to be done? That is done during the sprint planning. So in the sprint planning, uh, the stakeholders and then your product owners and your team, like all sit together and then have like uh, a conversation on, okay, so what needs to be, done within this time frame what are the delivery timeline that need to be delivered to the uh, clients or to your end user whoever it is so uh, that planning is done and after once we plan it we do the daily stand-up so in the daily stand-up it's been i'm highlighting it uh, just to give a little background in it like what each rituals means to it so it's a 15 minute max uh time frame within the 15 minutes each individual 
uh, just synchronize with their work, you know, like what they are doing on so that other, other developers knows, okay, what, what my other peer is doing on, on this, um, I mean, like a storage or what work they are doing on. So they start uh, updating on their status, like, uh, or maybe they are facing any impediments, any obstacles in between. So they discuss within, within the 15 minutes in a quick call so that everyone comes on together on the same pace. So that is done within the 15 minutes time window. And then we have like a sprint reviewing. So in between then a sprint review is done like, okay, where we are at certain time. Let's say we start in a, in a first, second, third day. And then we keep on checking like, okay, where we are at in a sprint review. Like we've been planned this and how much of the work is complete, accomplished or how much is remaining and so on, or something has been already developed, then we do the demo or something like that to our stakeholder. Okay, is this, are we on the right track or not? Is that something you're wanting? So that's in the sprint review, we do like whatever has been developed, we showcase to our stakeholder, to our end user, whoever it is. So, so that we, we come to an agreement, okay, whatever we are doing, we are on the right track, we are not going off track. So that's the purpose of sprint reviews. We do that. And then we also do like the sprint retrospective. So once we complete it, we look back to the sprint and say, okay, what has been done, in, uh, like what we did well, or what need to be improved, what action item need to be taken for the future. So that is the sprint retrospective. And the backlog refinement, it's like, the refining the backlog items that need to be developed in the future, that's a functionality or the future, whatever it is. So that's need the discussion like, okay, what kind of feature we want to develop? What is the requirement uh, from the clients or for, for the product, whatever it is, we can say. So that's the refinement has been done uh, and we discuss and then we break down into the stories. So that's done in the backlog refinement thing. So that's the overall sprint looks like. And the many think like, yes, this Scrum Master is the part of these whole rituals. Definitely Scrum Master is part of facilitating all these rituals, the five rituals that you see in this cycle for this sprint. So any questions so far on this one from any one of you or any confusion you want to discuss on this? Is it clear or anyone of, of you have any question on this? Anything? So how many are, uh, before I move ahead, like how many of you are already working in a scrum already, like uh, are, are familiar with this term or terminology or is it completely new to you guys? Maybe some of you are already familiar with it, maybe already doing in the scrum or starting. So you all are might be a little bit familiar with it, right? Might be practicing. Anyone of yeah, you? Yeah, it's like not completely new to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am finding like uh, being a senior mm -hmm. developer now. I'm looking forward to move towards the Scrum or product owner. So okay. I've enjoyed this session. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you are like, uh, if your organization has already adopted this Scrum framework, then you might be familiar with these all terminology and all, because I have kept it on very high level to introduce like what are the terms that has been used in this Scrum. So these are all five rituals which, go, which we have to follow when we are following this Scrum framework. You know, so these, these things need to be going into the repetitive waves in the cycle like this. So it goes all around like, like that. Uh, everything needs to be followed like that. So that's, that's an Scrum Master is a part of um, these rituals, which a Scrum Master helps in facilitating these all, uh, like planning meeting, Scrum, daily Scrum, daily standard meeting, review, retrospectives. So Scrum Master is part of these all rituals. So, yeah, so this is uh, a quick uh, overview of like, I'm not going into the much into the detail because of the time limitation also we have. So, and the Scrum, uh, it's like this Scrum team is made up of with, <coughs> is formed with development team where the develop, development team means developer uh, and the QA all, which is the part of like the development cycle. So that's the development team 
and then the scrum master and then the product owner who will the product owner will take part like take care of all the product uh, side like what need to be developed in the product so that's been taken care by the product owner and the scrum master guides the team to follow these all scrum uh, guidelines that has been recommended uh, for uh, so that the scrum master role is to facilitate all these rituals that has been defined in the scrum guideline. So the scrum master do the overall facilitation for the scrum cycle, whatever it is, like you see in the sprint, within the sprint, and the development team for, uh, solely focus on the development of the um, product. So that's how it looks like the scrum team looks like that, uh, that has uh, like the uh, formed with development team and then the scrum master and then the product owner. So any questions so far on this one? Uh, Ma'am, I would like to quickly ask mm -hmm. a question. Mm -hmm. So is there any limitations on these times and how much flexible these times are like time of a meeting? And like, on which of the meeting, like if these all meetings? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Okay, so Scrum daily stand up is like should be bound within the fifteen minutes. Shouldn't go uh, longer than fifteen minutes. Uh, and then uh, your sprint backlog refinement and all it depends on like the how long each your sprint. You know, so here it says like the sprint could be of one week. Uh, earlier, I already already mentioned like based on the organization, based on the product, uh, it's like. It, it's some organization followed like the one week sprint, some organization followed two weeks sprint, some organization four weeks sprint, but it shouldn't go beyond the four weeks, you know, not more than a month. So it's like the maximum uh, sprint length should be just four weeks. So depending on like, if we are planning for the four weeks, your backlog refinement goes into like the two to four hours. It's been planning also the same two to four hours. It's been retrospective again from two to three hours. A kind of that. So it depends on like how much of the work you are planning and how much your sprint length is. So so it depends on that basis. You know, the one to four hour is the maximum for other rest of the meetings, uh, depending on the sprint length. But the daily scrum is fixed time boxed for the fifteen minutes only. So does it make sense to you guys? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, okay, I got. It. Okay. So yeah, so that's how this scrum uh, looks like. And then this is how they sprint. And within the sprint, we have all these five rituals that goes in a cycle all over again. Again, another sprint is by, starts and again, that again, follow the same cycle and so forth. So that's how the every sprint looks like. Okay, so let's move on. So. Here, uh, coming to the point of like, okay, so what does the Scrum Master do? So is that something like the Scrum Master does on the daily basis? Yes, it's a part of it. The facilitation is the part that Scrum Master does on the daily basis, but that, that that's not only the thing, right? So what does they do every day? So what do you think? Like every day, it's not this, we are not doing the sprint planning every day. We are not doing this sprint backlog refinement every day. We are not doing a sprint retrospective every day, right? So what we do every day, what the Scrum Master does every day. So what they do is like analyzing the situation, providing the guidance to the team and building a relationship. So that is what the Scrum Master does every day. So, it's vague, right? But what do you mean by this? Analyzing the situation, or how do we do that, right? Providing the guidance, it's still it's a vague, like how we provide the guidance, what are the limitations, what are the boundaries, how much we go for the guidance and all so on. So let's say like what we do for each one of it. Okay, so analyzing situation. So how we can do, do this thing, how we analyze the situation by listening, and observation. So how the Scrum Master does the analysis of any of the situation is simply you have to listen and observe how we do it. When we are in a meeting, let's say like the Scrum Master doesn't have to do anything in that meeting. 
the extra master might not be the direct contributor to the meeting, right? Or the technical discussions are ongoing, other product requirements are ongoing, which is from master do not have to bother about all those things because it's a product owner responsibilities, right? To come up with the right requirements and all. And then if technical discussion is going on, we think like, oh, okay, that's a Scrum development team responsibility because they are experts on the technical side. So what? why we need a Scrum Master here, right? Because the Scrum Master is supposed to be not the technical expert is not supposed to be the product owner, but it's just the Scrum Master role is doing the facilitation of all those rituals. Then why we need a Scrum Master in every meeting? Why the Scrum Master need to have in um, presence? Why the Scrum Master presence is required in every meeting? Why? Because to observe. And what we do with observation? We analyze the situation so that we can do the guidance. So once we just listen to the conversation, what's going on, we have to listen it, observe it, in a way that we can, based on that, we can provide the guidance to the team. So how we do the guidance now? By teaching, coaching, and mentoring, right? So how, we, how the Scrum Master does the guidance? Okay, so you, once you observe the situation, what needs to be done and all, you start to teach and the coach to the team. Okay, so what, what is it that coaching means? What does it mean? How we coach? Coaching is just an asking question at the end. First you listen, listen, observe, observe, observe. And at the end, asking the right question is the coaching. You are not providing the solution to the team, but you are just asking the question, okay? Why we ask question? So that they can figure out their own solution. You are not the solution provider. You ask the right question based on your analysis, and then you ask the right question to the team. Once you write the, ask the right question, team itself will come up with the best solution. And there the conversation starts. So that is how you do the mentoring without giving the direct solution to your team, without directing to your team, you are coaching to your team asking the right question. That, that is what the coaching means. Once you start the questioning the right, right thing, then they would themselves will figure that out. Okay, what would be the solution? And then the brainstorming starts. And that's how the scrum master guide the team. So they themselves will find the solution. Just you need to coach them, mentor them in the right direction. You don't have to give the direction. Just ask the question so that they could figure out the right direction by themselves. They could figure out the solution to the complex problem. So that is how the Scrum Master role is. Okay, so now the Scrum Master is known as the servant leader. It's in the servant leadership. It's not, you have the authority, okay? So how we do it? You have to lead without the authority. So what, how it could be done? Leading without the authority can only be done when you have the good relationship with your team, with your stakeholders, within the organization, with your cross-functional team, right? Because if you have power, if you have authority, everyone will just follow you because you have power, right? You have authority and everyone will be okay because okay, he or she has a power, he or she is in this position, we have to follow them because that's the authorized position. And that position asks you to follow, that compel you to follow it. But then the scrum master doesn't hold that authority. It doesn't hold it. It's, it's a kind of type of, not like a kind of like directive leadership, it's a serving leadership. So you are supposed to serve your team, not direct your team. You know? So it couldn't be done when you have not been authorized, you are not in the power, you are not in the position, but then still you need to have things done, right? Being as a scrum master, you want to have your team performing well and delivering on time, having building the awesome product at the end and hitting that deadline and all, and you don't have that authority. So you can't just 
uh, force your team or enforce your team. So how it could be done, building the relationship with your stakeholders also on the product side, with your management leaderships and with your team. So that's all building relationship will help you to lead the team without having any authority. So that's all like the building the rapport, good rapport with the team management and the product. So that's all the Scrum Master do every day. It's a part of everyday role. Okay, so any questions so far? Anyone of you have any curiosity, anything? Are you guys any curious? Yeah. Like, okay, how? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we okay. can continue. Okay. Let's continue then. Okay, so that's all. I keep it short uh, because of the limitation of time also. And I have my flight at seven, so I have to leave. So just I, I'm hoping like, okay, so you guys got like a quick, overview of like what does the scrum master do and what are the scrum rituals that we follow and all and here are the major key takeaways that you could see like okay being as a scrum master what you do so scrum master serves the organization in several ways like we already discussed as three major points except the facilitating the rituals that is all three jobs they do on the daily basis like the analyzing the situation and then uh, the building the relationship and all, right? So that we already discussed. And then besides that, okay, so lead, leading, training, and coaching the organization in a scrum adoption. So it's not just your team, you know? The scrum master role is not only limited to the just one team they've been assigned. When there are other several teams coming in or your organization is new to this scrum, then your role is like to make understand the organization leadership also, what does it values, what, what values it could add having the scrum framework in within the organization. So you need to train all your relevant stakeholders within the organization, not within your team also, all the cross-functional team also. Sometimes I see like a conflict between the organization, like let's say the one team is working in a scrum model and the other team is working in the traditional model, right? And then, and but then you have like a kind of uh, uh, dependency with the other team, let's say. So you are dependent on the other team, which is working in the traditional model, and one is a scrum model. And then you say like, oh, we need to finish this job within this sprint. And then the, the team which is working in the traditional model, and they do not understand, oh, what does that sprint mean? Okay, so. And, and the scrum team will ask them to, okay, we need to get it done. Can you give me this on by this date? And they were like, why? Why we need to get it done on this date? You can take like, well, once we'll have like a free time, then we'll get it done. So why you need by this time? Because they don't understand the, what the sprint is about, you know? So you, have, you are time bound. You need to finish certain things that you have committed within that sprint. So you need to make them understand like why that urgency is. Because those which, who is not working in a scrum model may not understand why this urgency is being caused to your team. Just because, so that is valued. And the principles of scrum, you need to make other team leadership also on other stakeholders, like your product side or like the client side, who is your end user. You need to make them also understand they might not understand like why you need this, what's the purpose of this. And so the purpose, the values, the principles, you need to make them understand so that they also get aligned. And that's how the Scrum it can be adopted in your organization. So that's also the Scrum Master role. It's not just looking after your one and only team that has been assigned to you. It's like the overall organizational responsibility is also on you. Like if someone is not understanding, it's your responsibility to make them understand why this counts. Uh, the value on it, okay? So the next point is like planning and advising a scrum implementation with an organization. So let's say you are in a, in a, in a, uh, a startup organization, let's say, you're very new to the organization and then your organization has not adopted and trying to adopt this, let's say it's adopted somehow, then it's your responsibility to implement it. 
So, okay, we, let's say like some organization will decide to go into this Scrum framework. And they say, no, okay, now we are working in this Scrum framework. Okay, that's fine. Then they say, no, we don't want to do the daily stand-up daily. What's the purpose of it? We don't want to do it. We don't want to do, spend the time on these mini meetings. And we didn't have any of the meeting back then. And now you are asking me to do the five meetings every time whenever we start this sprint and it's just a waste of time, right? So they might think in the first place when you are in the traditional model, you don't care about the meetings. You go as you go on, 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 on the floor, right? As you go along, you figure out things you do on, most of the things are done on the fly. It's ad hoc basis, not planned basis, right? But then when you are in the scrum, you have to follow all those rituals. So it's your responsibility to plan things and advise like how it could be implemented. Like these are the rituals we have to follow it. And this is how it needs to be done. So that's the scrum master role that advising and the implementation within the organization. So that, that's the number two. So number three is helping employees and stakeholders understand and enact the, an empirical approach for complex work. That's already we discussed about this thing. So your team, your stakeholder, we need to make them understand like how this complex work can be done. What would be the best intact empirical approach that needs to be taken for the complex work, right? If something complex work like in the scrum, like how we break down these things, how we plan things in an iterative way, that's a sprint is also called as iteration. That's because we do over and over again, iterative way, so that the complex work can be broken down into the multiple iteration or multiple sprint, and then it goes into the incremental way. So that's how the complex work can be broken down into the smaller pieces. And that's how at the end we can accomplish, like the breaking down the complex thing into the smaller part helps you to accomplish things in an easier way or efficient way. So that's your responsibility to make understand everyone, even your stakeholder and someone like stakeholder would ask, oh, I want to get this done by this, 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 and now you, everyone get lost. Like how we can do this, these huge things? Like people get overwhelmed with all those features and functionality that has been overloaded by the product or the stakeholders and then, okay, how we do it? But then once we start the planning, the refinement, backlog refinement, when you start talking on the requirement side and the breaking down into the smaller chunk, it gives, it helps you to have the clarity of the things that need to be done. Because as you discuss, you get more clear idea on that. So that's how you're being as a scrum master, that's your role is about to help them to understand and bring everyone together uh, and to to simplify things up. So that's, the number, that's the number three. So number four is like removing barrier, barriers between the stakeholders and the scrum teams. Okay, so this is important, uh, number four, because when we have a barrier, we are not able to accomplish things what we aim for. So it says scrum master responsibility, even if we have any barrier, obstacle or impediments between the stakeholders and the scrum team, it's your responsibility to collaborate, to cooperate, to coordinate, to communicate All C's comes in. So all the C's here, like helps you to understand, to remove the barriers between the team and the stakeholders so that, that your team can work smoothly, they have the clarity to work on, what needs to be done, your stakeholders will be happy, what your team is working on. So those, those in between the gaps that was earlier mentioned by uh, Sanjay, so here, here the Scrum Master role comes to number four, like whatever you said uh, earlier Sanjay, so that comes on the number four. So it helps to remove the gaps between the stakeholder, bring the transparency between the stakeholder and the team, what they are doing, how far they are, and what they are developing. So those all scrum rituals helps to bring the transparency. Once we bring everyone on board on that ritual, everyone always remains uh, synchronized with each other. And the, when, once we synchronize, once we collaborate, then that gives the clarity and then that helps to remove the barriers between between the stakeholders and the teams. Uh, so yeah, so that is all about the Scrum Master role. So any question, anything so far from any one of you? So that's my last slide, guys. So anything from you? Any question then we can discuss, we can 
discuss for, for my five minutes, um, any curiosity or anything, you can go ahead and ask. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have got one question from the registration form. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, it is more about the QA things, but uh, how do I start a career in project management? So what's mm -hmm. your suggestion for starting a career in a PM role? Uh, from the QA to PM role? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or generally, how can I directly mm -hmm. uh, start a career in PM? It's, it, it is possible or I need to be a QA, then only I can be a PM. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you for the question. So, yeah, I think like the, every role has like its own uh, skill set that requires like the QAs need to have like the different skill set and then the project management if you are uh, trying to move into the transition into the project management from the QA role to the PM role then the another skill set is required. Definitely there are then another skill set that you need to have, but it's not impossible. You can always switch your career, whoever, whatever it interests you. So it's also depends on like the, how passionate you about. It's, QA is about like the quality, asserting your quality of the product, right? You are more into the side of the product side. And then the PM is a more into a kind of like a, it has like a three things that need to be uh, three skill set. You need to have like the people management skill set, and then the project management. If you are, and that's how the project the putting the pieces together. You know, uh, the small little pieces is scattered all over, and then you have to make a good picture out of the small pieces. So if you are good at that, putting the pieces together, it's all about the collaborating and all those things communicating. Then that's that's good role for you to switch into, you know. So it's like the communication, how good you are at the communicating, how you are good at uh, uh, people management skill also. These are the kind of like the soft skill and it's hard to um, measure things because it's very intangible things. Like it's a, it comes on under the soft skill. So you are good at that uh, and the leadership skill also then that's fine, then you are you are good to go with the PM role. So those are the skills that, that uh, need to, uh, that required in the PM role. If you think then that's, it's not like the, if someone is developer, I was also developer and now I'm into the PM role, right? So it's, it, I, I saw that transitioning, that the mindset which I had back then as a developer and then coming to the PM role, it was complete 100% transition of my mindset. So it took me a while to get into this mindset. It's a completely different mindset also. So developing is like the logical thinking and all. And this is a kind of like, what do you say? Like, uh, it's not a kind of the logical or the technical uh, kind of thing, but then emotional. Emotional thinking is more required in the PM role. Whereas in, in the QA or in the developer, it's a logical thinking is required because you are more into the logical side. And here is like the emotional side. So two different skill set is that, but I moved into this role, and um, so yeah, so those are the skill set that required. Any any more questions? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so we have time limit. Uh, so if anyone yeah. wants to ask the question, you can raise yeah. the hand. Uh, so before that, I I have one question uh, about this only about the Scrum Master. So how do you maintain the accountability and integrity in your team, and uh, how do you work on the creativity side uh, to maintain this uh, two phase? Accountability and integrity side. Sorry, can you repeat that yeah. question? Yeah. There? yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how how I, I maintain that? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So here is like the accountability comes with like you know uh, either it's the creativity or wherever you go. Accountability is always about like a kind of like what does accountability mean? Like you've been you need to answer right. Accountability means like you owned that to answer someone. That's the accountability is like if someone asks you anything that you should be able to ready to get to give them answer. That's the accountability. Like let's say something goes wrong, then you are accountable for that. If you have answer, you need to justify that things. So that's the accountability comes in and with the, any role it is, uh, it could be like any developer or whatever it is role. So accountability comes 
in any of the role. It's not only in the PM role. So where you are supposed to answer to justify things, and that's how the accountability comes. So when you are good at the role, you justify things up. Okay, what's the pros, what's the cons, and why it happened, and why this happened, and why it went wrong, or why it went right. So all those things comes with like, that's the accountability. So it's like when you are doing your job, you need to know like what you are doing in a right or what you are doing in a wrong way, you know, or, or what uh, sometimes, sometimes like you are not doing, um, you are not, I mean, like you don't know like what, what way you are going, but then something went wrong still, but then still you need to have like the accountability of admitting yourself. Okay. This was something that I did wrong. So in the, in the, like, and take it as a learning and then you improve on those things. And then that's how the, you are accountable for your own action also, you know, whatever action you take, you are accountable for your own action and you need to, you need to have, be a courageous to say or admit like, okay, I did this wrong and I should have done in a better way. Like this might be the right approach I did in the wrong thing. So that comes with accountability. So that is how we, we, we do it. It could be in any role, in any organization, for anyone. I think I, I hope I answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So first, uh, Pradeep ji, uh, you can ask the question uh, to ma'am. You can unmute. Okay, thank you. Uh, generally, I have two questions now. One mm -hmm. question is that uh, uh, is the project manager and the scrum master's role uh, are we can say that we can interchange the role of the project manager and the scrum master, or there are some difference between some difference in between the scrum role, uh, master and the project manager role. One, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. second one is that can any of the team member can take the role of the scrum master, or always uh, the team lead or the project manager should take that role? Thank you for my question. Thanks, brother. It's a very good question. I have so okay so two of, of answering your first question like okay so project manager and scrum masters are two different roles for so definitely there are two different roles so it's a, a kind of like it seems like a similarity right with the project manager project manager also manages the project and these all things and the scrum master does but then like I mentioned like scrum master does these things by um uh, in a serving type of attitude or the serving leadership you know so here you have you don't have much on the authority side so you are onto the side of like guiding the team mentoring the team coaching the team you are not directive to the team you know whereas in the project management in the traditional project management you might see like there are some direction given to your team members you know like maybe uh you know you need to do this job can you do this job? You are, you are assigning constantly to your team members being as a project manager. If you, if you think of the traditional project manager, yes, they do like that. They define the what work need to be done by whom, even they find, figure out like who is who will be doing this work. So it's a kind of directive type of like, you are giving always giving the direction to, the, to your team. You are always, and your team is always looking up to you like what next is coming to me, right? Whereas the scrum master is not directive role. It's like you've been helping your team to being the autonomous team, you know? You are not directing, but then you are asking the team like you, the team itself, get empowered or like slave they itself take an initiative like in the scrum uh, uh, framework you are never the one who assign work to your team your team itself pick their work like who is expert on what and they will discuss within their own group uh, in the development team and then they will pick up their uh, work what they think they can do it or contribute on it, you know? So it's never the scrum master, they ask to do like this, this work need to be done by you, this work need to be done, okay, and what's next you are doing and all. It's not like that. So you are not directive, you are helping a team to be the self-organized team, being the autonomous, you are, uh, and then leading the team uh, by your own, you know? So it's not like you are just giving a kind of, you know, from the outside, you are just coaching, but then you are not keeping an eye to the team. 
like a very micromanaging the team, whereas a project manager may or may not micromanage. I mean, like with the assignment of the work and everything. So they always look up to the project management. In this, they never look up to the scrum master, like, okay, what next I need to do? Until and unless they have some impediments or some obstacles, they need to discuss and there comes the scrum master role. But on the task basis, it's not like that. So that's the major difference between the project management and the scrum master. Uh, okay, so for the next question, sorry, I forgot what the next question what was that. Can you repeat that? Yes, um, as you said that this uh, this is not directive role of mm -hmm. the scrum master. Mm -hmm. So can the scrum master be anyone in the team, or mm -hmm. it should be the like the team lead or only the project managers should take okay. that role? No, anyone can be the scrum master. It's not like okay, only the team lead, but then you need to have those kind of skill set, you know, like I earlier mentioned, like if you are in the role of project management or the scrum master, you need to have a certain kind of skill set, which is which may or may not have in uh, like in all of like members in your team, like let's say they are, they are the developer and if they don't have that mindset, they may not go to that role, they might not choose that role, because they don't like it. Right, uh, like managing the people and all, they are more focused. Some of the some of the members are like, okay, they just want to get things done, whatever they are doing. They just want to uh, get done with their coding, whatever it is, and they don't want to go after people or like even even being as a scrum master, you don't go after the people to like to keep on checking every now and then. Uh, but then you need to have like the collaborative type of skill set, like how much you can collaborate. How, can, how much you can be a team player, how much you can communicate in a way like you bring everyone uh, in sync with each other. So it's not like only the team lead or like the project manager can go to this role. Anyone can go to this as long as they have this skill set. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we have- a, Thank you. We, we mm -hmm. have a last question, uh, Sanjay, mm -hmm. uh, you can speak up and please be short. Okay, so my question is like, uh, Ardana manager like mentioned, like she was a developer before and she switched, switched to the Scrum Master later on. So how was your uh, the, you, how was your experience in between that transition phase and what kind of difficulties you have uh, suffered during that transition period? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, it's been long back though. Uh, more than 10 years. Um, I was uh, yeah, almost like 10 to 10 years already. It was very, very, very tough for me to transition from the developer role to the project management role. Just because I was too much into the developer role, so I always get into the technical side, you know. <laughs> that was the biggest challenge for me. Like, let's say, like, if you are technically sound, like, you have experience or not sound, I won't say, like, the sound, but then you have, like, the experience of the technical, like, the coding and all. And then when you see someone in a team, like, doing the coding and you have an idea of, oh, okay, this could be done in that way. Like, but then your role doesn't supposed to, to guide them in a coding. Like, okay, you do this piece of code and all this. When I was developer, we together, we as a team between the developers, we definitely sometimes like we help each other. We help our colleague or uh, in, a, in a team to, to code something, right? So, so it's like you more into getting into the technical, technical side rather than your managerial side. So it was like the huge transitioning phase and it was tough from me to, going from the mindset of like the technical side to the managerial side. So that was one of the challenges uh, I faced and it took me a while to get into that mindset. Okay, this is not what I'm supposed to do. I'm, I'm into the managerial side. I need to oversee things from the high level. I shouldn't be going into much into the detail. That was one. And then the other time, like when you start, like let's say they probably start discussing on something, then I also get involved as I am also a developer, you know, and start into the discussing and the conversation. So it used to take away my lot of time from my managerial skill to the technical side of skill. It wasn't bad for me, but then I need to focus on the other side, which I wasn't able to do it because constantly I've been dragging down into the technical side. <laughs> Sorry. 
So it took me a while, but then later you learn those things. And okay, so my responsibility is this. Now I shouldn't be going much into the digging down into the, all the technical, but I have to leave to the developer, trusting the developers in a way, okay, they, they are going to do a good job and all. Because when you are a developer, you want to see all the all your codes and everything, okay, it's well done or not. And But then being as a project manager, you don't have to dig into the detail of all those things. So that was the biggest challenge for me. And slowly I transitioned on that part. Uh, thank you so much. So we have thank a time limit. We have a time limit, uh, so there is mm. one more uh, question hand raised. Mm. Uh, so before that, uh, I just want to wrap up for this session. Uh, just I want to know about your point of view about the KPI, uh, key mm -hmm. performance indicator. So uh, does the Scrum Master measure the KPI of a team or a project manager uh, measures the KPI of a team? Uh, Scrum Master doesn't measure the KPI of the team. They do not uh, because they don't have to. Um, but then I still a little, it depends on like okay, what leadership is asking. So it depends on based on the organization also, but then they are not supposed to give the KPI uh, because this in this Scrum, what we do is like, we have like the commitment based on the feature or the objectives, you know? So you don't have actually need to measure all those metrics how the team is performing if you're like on on the kind of the numbers or the matrix kind of thing it it does help her really a little bit on like the forecasting on the things to measure out with the little numbers and all with all those metrics but then here like the performance is measured like how the team is uh, delivering based on their commitments or not so so the commitment in a sense of objectives they committed like okay these are the objectives is going to be or these are the goals of the sprint that is going to be accomplished by the end of this sprint or the, by the end of this quarter, uh, whatever it is. So it's like a directly measure on that part. So we do not go traditionally on the KPI, which is like the traditional project management method to measure on all those metrics. So in this Scrum, we do not do that. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank so you. Uh, do we have a time to answer one more question or uh, shall we wrap up? Sure, uh, one last and then uh, we should be okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's sure. take that one last. Yeah, yeah. by Simran uh, Gupta. So you can unmute your mic. Yeah. Hello. Hello, uh, Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, hi, ma'am. My name is Simran Gupta. I'm a fresh graduate. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, ma'am, I'm really interested in project management, but mm -hmm. I don't know how to get into it. So mm -hmm. I search a lot about it and I got to know that there are some scrum master courses available mm -hmm. so taking those courses uh, is that uh, necessary or how do we just get into it and another question is uh, somebody told me that I need to get into QA so that it would ultimately lead me to project management mm -hmm. is that true uh, so yeah that was my question to you Okay, so yeah, for, for your first question, I think like if you are like, if you are fresh graduate, you already studied about the Scrum, these things in there, I think in the project management, you guys might be studying nowadays, it's in the curriculum, I'm not sure like if you have in your curriculum or not in your uh, graduation, but then if not, then it's definitely going to help you when once you have the training, because if you don't have any idea, if you don't know the terminology, what does it mean? Uh, it's going to, uh, I mean, like you can be a little lost when you start your career and, and it would also be not a good idea to start without having those, knowing those things ahead of time. So having those a kind of training or you can self-learn those things by your own or you can take any certification courses like that. And certified is not necessary, but then you need to go through these all terminology. What does it mean? How does it work and all? So that is definitely going to help you to land a job for the project manager, I mean, like for a job of a scrum master. And then the second is like, it's not always like a, the QA from the career path is only from the QA to the PM. Anyone could be uh, uh, a 
could go into this PM role or Scrum Master role. Like I said, I'm also, I came from the developer background. Even if you don't have any of the technical skill, you never worked as a developer or a QA, still you can be a Scrum Master. There are many who is working, who are working uh, as a Scrum Master without having any background of developers or the QA. But then you need to know like what, what the Scrum Master role is and how does it work. So, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the idea of these things. The Scrum, you need to know the not you need to have the knowledge of Scrum. That's that is all about. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I was told that um, mm -hmm. uh, since I'm a fresh graduate, nobody will give me the job of a Scrum master or a project mm -hmm. manager directly. So mm -hmm. people told me to get into something and then ultimately switch the career. Uh, how do I freshly start my career as a in project management? That was my question. Okay, so of course, like you need to have like having a kind of the project manager role is like uh, you need to have some experience, right? Before managing something, that that is why it's been uh, said like okay, if you are, have worked in the past on something, then you have that experience of like how does this work? right let's say like uh otherwise you you never know like what to manage if you don't know the actual work and if you don't have an experience of the actual work what is done then how you could manage that because you don't have that experience of like what does it work let's like the software uh, uh software you are in in the industry of uh, building the software but then you, you never know like how this software is being um, developed or what are the things that that takes the software to be developed, then how are you gonna manage without having that knowledge? So that's the one thing because to manage something, you really need to have that experience, even in, in the in, in a household work also. Like if you want to manage, you need to know like what needs to be managed. Like you need to know that work before, otherwise you have no idea like what to manage if you don't know the exact work that need to be that has been done. So that's one thing. Uh, so that's that's might be the reason like people recommend like at least you have certain kind of experience so that you can manage that work. You know, so so that that's the reason. Otherwise, you you can get into slowly. Uh, uh, into like the being the associate type of a scrum master you can learn those things and how they are doing that's the another way of alternative way of without having any other uh going into the, any other uh you know the career path you can directly go the, but then being as an associate you have to start with that or the trainee kind of thing you know the trainee is scrum master or associate is scrum master you need to under someone so that you can learn those things if you are not trying to go ahead with the other career path and then to the scrum master then because to start with something you need to have some experience in the past that might that's the only reason yeah answer uh, the question thank you yeah. thank you so much ma'am. yeah thank you so much uh, for that uh, uh that one uh so if you have more question uh to aradana ma'am right so you can just contact in her mobile number yeah. or you can contact on the linkedin so it is on the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. And I hope like you guys enjoy this session. And any question, anything, please connect me on LinkedIn. I will be happy to answer any of your question or to guide you uh, on this journey also. So thanks everyone for a wonderful time.